So you're doing you're working at the doors and you're doing security. Like, how'd you get from that to working at five fifty one? Oh man. Um plus you had a BA degree on um, yeah. about two months. So I only have God to answer for you know <laughs> for for that because um even I can't believe how I came from doing the doors, you know, working as a security guard uh to where I am now. But um for me um I was looking up uh in, in when I was in form seven, year thirteen, um I was always looking for uh, um a job opportunities on Western Little. At the time, no no cell phones, uh, so Western Little was my go-to uh, resource to to find jobs. And I came across um, a job opportunity at the um, at the mall, Western Little Mall. And yep, as a security guard, no experience was needed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you just have to be fit. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fit, uh, and I'm willing to like you know to do whatever it takes for me to earn some money. And so from there. I only stopped doing security in I think twenty seventeen oh, wow. before before we my 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 wife and I got married. Um, I was still doing security at a hotel, um, and I've been a, a porter. Um, I used to do porter when I was at uni. Like I said, I I was doing all those small jobs just to earn enough uh, to pay for my bills here and to support my family back home. Um, um, I, I worked for farmers as a, as a security when I was at uni, uh, real groovy, um, and still doing the doors um, in town, um, and events as well. Um, you know, like you know those rugby games at Eden Park. I was doing those security, um, but um, but those jobs I knew it wouldn't be my long term career. It was just for me to earn money. Um, and it was the easiest job to get for me, to, uh, to be honest. Um, <laughs> the easiest, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, not the easiest in terms of getting, but the easiest in terms of just standing there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, it's, that's what I mean, like, the easiest job for me to do at the time. Uh, I wasn't, labor wasn't involved or anything like that. But uh, when I finished um, um, my BA in 2006, um, 2007, I was still doing um, um, security and studying uh, my BA honors, and I was um, blessed to be um, to receive the um, uh, the Pacific Student Award um, in the year 2007. And in beginning of 2008, I started working for Immigration New Zealand in town, and that was sort of like uh, my first um, professional, uh, you know, career. Mm -hmm. um, and I always wanted to work. It was either um, work in income or immigration New Zealand because mm -hmm. I saw those uh, jobs as, you know, those um, office jobs, you know. <laughs> and, um, you yeah, know, I was blessed mm -hmm. with an opportunity to, um, to work for immigration New Zealand from 2008 to 2012. So what were you doing for them, for immigration? What were you, what were you doing for immigration? Uh, just processing um, and also doing customer service mm. um, in town. And um, and I met my my wife in 2009 um, as a friend. And then, um, you know, um, you know that saying, uh, you know, love it first, you know. <laughs> 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 so you already planted the seeds and yeah. went for the long run. Yeah, the yeah, long yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I saw this girl, you know, uh, you know, um, like straight away. Hey, I was like, bro, you know, I can see um, a future with that girl, and um, quite young at the time to have that sort of thought. But um, anyway, um, uh, so we became friends in 2010, 2011. Um, as she got to know me, she asked me. Um, why don't you go and work in a health sector, in a community health? And, and I said, why? And she said, uh, I see something um, in you that you can offer more than working in the office. You know, the way I do things, uh, you know, the way I, you know, joke, joke around. And, um, yeah, and, she, and, and I didn't really understand what she uh, meant, uh, you know, at the time. But she, she was still pushing me to go and work in uh, community health, uh, you know, to do, like, um, health promotion, 
um, emceeing events and stuff like that. And, and I said, oh, yeah, I'll give it a go, even though I don't have any uh, qualification in health. And so I applied for a, um, a smoke-free smoking cessation practitioner role uh, in 2012. And after my interview with the, uh, you know, with the um, employer, uh, Mangere Health, um, they wanted to offer me another role, not the smoking cessation practitioner. Uh, I don't know, maybe I, they were, you know, maybe impressed, you know, with the way I did my presentation <laughs> in the interview, you know? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, cool. Well, what are you going to offer me? I would like to offer you a, a health promotion officer role, not just smoking cessation. Oh, yeah, sweet. And so from there, that's, um, God opened that door for me to actually get out there and, and, and realize, man, um, you know, life is bigger than just being an immigration officer. Mm-hmm. And from there, I had opportunities to MC this event, that event. So my very first event uh, for work to MC was 2012 in Mangere Town Centre. Uh, so it's been 10 years now since I... Yeah, since I've been doing um, emceeing. And so from there, um, being a, a health promotion officer, um, another door was open. Um, I had a, got a job at the, uh, now moving on to something bigger, Auckland Regional Public Health Service, which is under the Ministry of Health as a health promotion officer. So still doing the same thing, but uh, working in workplaces, you know, with Pacifica and Māori. Um, and then after that, um, then I realized I got to go and do uh, some uh, health papers. Yeah, so I went and um, studied some health papers, uh, did, um, did some research with one of some, uh, some of the doctors at um, Middlemore Hospital. Oh, yeah. Doing, um, yeah. What, what was the research? It was an uh, inhaler, smart inhaler. Uh, it was when it was firstly introduced to... Um, you know, to South Auckland, uh, the smart inhaler is where, um, you know, people with um, asthma, um, if they're not complying with their medicines, then their doctors can read um, their medicines by um, checking the, you know, the device that's attached to their inhalers. So if you're not taking your, you know, your inhaler, then your doctors know, and then you'll get a phone call, ah, oh, you know. So we did a research, a six month research, and then uh, after that, move on to um, uh, come to Smartco Health um, and being a project coordinator uh, for bowel cancer. And then from there um, to where I am now, uh, being a, um, a community engagement manager for uh, local doctors and White Cross. So we've got clinics up on uh, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Road. We've got a medical centre in Ranui. Yeah. Um, and... So we've got like more than 50 clinics in Auckland and uh, radio is a different story. A radio, um, those who Sela Alo reach out to me and Sela Alo used to work for a Heart Foundation doing the same thing mm-hmm. as what I was doing. Yeah, yeah the Heart um, yeah. Yeah, the heart, uh, problems are. Problems, and yeah. Then... So I used to work for Heart <coughs> Foundation and we were like doing all the health promotion, you know, and he must have seen me emceeing events. And then when he um, um, started working for New FM and Pacific Media Network, and they were looking for a, a, a producer, you know, for the Samoan show at the time, and Sheila Alo reached out to me. I didn't, no experience, you know, no no qualification in media. And he said, ah, yeah, well, we'll offer you all the training you need, whatever you need, um, you know, to fulfill your role. And I said, oh, yeah, cool. So that's fine if you, are, if you think that I can do it. What year was that, Oz? Uh, 2018. And that's coming at a time where radio at the time, especially in the radio time, yeah. one, and PM&E, it, right. was, it wasn't really, yeah. you know, like the back of the um, the days where you, everyone knew radio, radio time more, especially in the pm and umbrella, right? Mm, so, mm. like, it, it landed in your lap. Yeah. It sounds a bit, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it was a difficult task for me because um, the competition with other language programs uh, was quite high and um, and for me being a, a fresh producer like I didn't really know um, what was expected um, of me or I didn't know how to like lift PM in Samoa you know to be uh, the best 
because for me, when I do things, I, I just want to give my best and I want um, I want to do my best, you know. And um, when I first started um, as a radio, um, as a producer for Pimin Samoa, I didn't know anything about this, you know, paneling, mics. Um, MCing is quite different from hosting, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to be careful in what you say, uh, especially because um, Pacific Media Network is a national radio and all Samoans in New Zealand are listening to you. Um, but uh, I, I was praying and fasting and, you know, to God to help me. And also my wife believed um, that the first, remember, she pushed me to go into the health sector because she saw something. And it's the same thing she saw. Like, you, you, you can be a, a good podcaster. And so having um, the right people in the office at PMN, Pacific Media Network, to support you um, and offer you whatever, any help, I think that helped me a lot to, to speed up, you know, my, speed up the game, you know. And, yeah, so that's how I ended up, you know, in, 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 in the studio as a, as a broadcaster and still doing it. Um, so as, as a casual role, uh, because we don't broadcast every day. Um, the Sam Warren show is only aired on Thursday and Sunday. Um, but if you want to do like extra work, uh, that's entirely up to you. But my full-time role is, uh, with, um, local doctors and what cross, um, and my casual, still doing two jobs, you know, a casual role with, uh, Pacific Media Network. And my real full-time uh, job is being a husband and a, and a father. 